It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege of interviewing the Buffalo State's head football coach, Coach Lazarus Morgan. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good, Brandon. Thanks for having me today. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in college football? Yeah, it's funny. Like, I didn't go to school and major in coaching. I went to school and majored in communications, and it probably wasn't until going into my senior season when I had an opportunity to work with some high school kids at a camp. I started getting the bug like, hey, maybe this is something that I wanted to do for a living possibly. And then um, when I graduated, I had an opportunity to help out at Utica College where I went to school. And um, I got right into it. And I've been in, in it ever since. What was that experience like playing college football for Utica College? Well, it was great. The program was very young. It's still a very young program, uh, 20 plus years, which is very small and compared to other programs around New York State at a Division III. Um, it was a young program. It was a great experience. I had a got to play for two head coaches, got to play on both sides of the football, got to meet a lot of special people who I'm still in contact with today. So uh, I would describe it as a very positive experience. What was that experience like getting to put on that uniform for Utica and representing Utica? It was pretty cool. You know, it, it was great. You know, Utica is always going to be a special city for me. Uh, my first son was born in Utica, New York. I met a lot of important people in my life. I don't think I would be where I am in my career without going to Utica College. So I think it was very, very um positive experience and it was special. What was that experience like, as you said, playing on both sides of the football at Utica? It was great because it definitely gave me a different perspective. Um, coming out of high school, I was a wide receiver. And then and I had a, uh, my sophomore year, I took a break from playing football because of personal reasons. Then when I came back, I played defense. And uh, it was great just seeing different perspectives of the game. And I think it helped develop me as a coach as well, just seeing the game from different lenses. When I started coaching, I actually did the same exact thing, start on offense and then move to the defense side of the ball. So I think those experiences were very positive and definitely helped with my development, both as a player and as a coach. As a player, what were some of your biggest accomplishments? Um, biggest accomplishments, I mean, like, you know, there are records out there. There's some things that I did, you know, statistically that are – that are, you know, good for me as an individual. But I always tell people all the time, we didn't have the most team success when I was there. And that's what it's about. It's always about the team and wins. So, yeah, there's some individual accolades. I, I was named an all-conference team. I, I've got – I had several records as far as interceptions and things of that nature. But to me, those things didn't mean anything because we didn't win as many games as I wanted us to win. Um, right now, the program's in a great place. So, as, a, as an alum, I enjoy watching, seeing the program win eight, nine, ten-game seasons. I think it's very, very exciting time right now. Of course, what was that transition like going from being a player to coaching at your alma mater? It was very tough at first because there were a lot of guys who were your teammates and now you're the coach. So it was a little tough. That's why I think it was great that I, I got away from the defensive side of the ball and worked with the offensive side of the ball. So I wasn't directly um, connected with kids that I just played with on the field. So I think that was very, very important for my development. Um, so I, I describe it as... Um, I described it as something that was very helpful for me. How was that experience like getting to work with the JV and being their head coach? That that gave me an opportunity to call plays. It gave me an opportunity to manage. Um, as a GA, you don't have these opportunities sometimes. As a GA, you're, you know, if you're if you're lucky like me, you'll get to run your own individual. You're lucky to coach a position, but a lot of GAs don't have that liberty. So they, you know, they're usually somebody's assistant. So they don't really have a lot of say in the, in the game plan activity or, or saying what actually happens at practice. So being a, the JV head coach and just a JV experience gave me an experience to call plays for the first time in my life, gave me experience to manage the game from a head coaching role. So it definitely helped a lot. And I liked, I liked that experience a lot. I pushed, you know, all our young coaches to really take pride in the JV experience because that kind of trains you for when you get to a full-time position or you get to a coordinator position or you get to a head coaching position. Of course, being the JV coach at Utica, what was that taste like getting that little taste of being a head coach? That was awesome. I mean, I actually enjoyed being the coordinator more because you were calling the defense and you were more locked in with the kids. When you're the JV head coach, you're overseeing everything. 
Um, when the parents come up to you, you know, if their kid's not playing and they want to play more, you know, stuff you didn't really deal with as a coordinator. But I definitely, when I look back on, once again, those experiences helped um, develop me and get me to the point where I am right now. What was that experience like getting to coach the safeties at Utica? That was awesome. Uh, the safeties were the quarterbacks of our defense. Um, it made me start developing thoughts what I wanted to do with my own defense one day when I was a defensive coordinator, seeing things from the back end and working your way to the front. Um, it was a great time. I got an opportunity to coach some really good players. Some of those guys are actually coaching right now. So um, it was really exciting times, and I was really thankful for that opportunity. What was that like, getting that defensive coordinator role and becoming a defensive coordinator at Alfred University? Oh, I was very special. Um, defensive coordinator, that's what I always wanted to do when I got into coaching. I thought that one day I'd have my opportunity. I loved the way, you know, the preparation of the film, the game planning, trying to stop your opponent. I always took pride in kind of figuring those things out. So when I got that opportunity to be a defensive coordinator, it was uh, it was a dream come true, honestly. And um, Alfred University was a perfect place for me. Um, during my time there, we had some really, really special defenses, and I got an opportunity to work with and coach some really special players. How was that experience, like, working with some of those SUNY schools, like SUNY of Cortland as the defensive coordinator? It was great. You know, it was great. Once again, I got an opportunity to work with some really special players and special people. Um, school like Cortland really, really – takes pride in athletics and I like all the support that they give towards athletics. So it was a great experience at the time when I was there, we did have the, the most winning uh, season in program history until this year where they just won a national championship. So it's definitely, um, it was definitely a great experience, great people, great college town, great environment for football. While at Cortland, what was that experience like in 2021 going to that sweet 16? Uh, it was, it was my second time going back to the playoffs and I, as a coordinator and I really enjoyed it. Uh, the first time I went, I didn't enjoy it as much because I put so much pressure on myself to try to be perfect. And we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to be the best. Um, the second time around, I enjoyed it a lot more because you don't ever know when those special seasons are going to come. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, the hard work that our coaches and our players put in for that defense. And I really enjoyed like watching those players get over that hump. You know, a group of those players have been knocking on the door, knocking on the door, knocking on the door. So finally to kick the door down and have the season that they had, I was really proud of those guys. What was that feeling like when you got the call from Buffalo State to become their next head coach? You know, it's funny, like uh, when I went on the interview, I didn't even know if I really wanted to be a head coach. I went on an interview because I wanted to get the experience of a head coaching interview. I wanted to see exactly what that was like. When I got on campus, I got to Buffalo. It was probably one of the coldest days of the year. My door actually was like frozen when I tried to open it when I was leaving my hotel. So I was like, whoa, it's cold up here. Um, when I got a chance to walk around campus and meet the people, I fell in love. And at that point, I knew I wanted to be the head coach for this football program. So when I got the call, I was in the airport in Dallas, and I got the call, and I was very, very excited. Um, I couldn't believe it. It was like a dream come true. Um, a kid from Bronx, New York, coming all the way to Buffalo, getting a chance to be the head football coach. It was um, a really special moment. Of course, for you, when you got that call in that airport, what was that like transitioning from coach? from recruiting for SUNY Portland to now recruiting for yourself at Buffalo State? Oh, it was different. You know, some kids that I, I was in contact with, I was able to convince to come to Buffalo State. Other kids, I was not. Um, it was kind of tough because we were kind of behind the ball when we got here as a staff, being in February, kind of behind the ball recruiting. So we had to keep going pretty, pretty fast. I think we were able to, you know, put together a good recruiting class with some kids that are still on our team now. So it lets us know that, okay, we got that first class in, even though that was year zero technically. But um, we were able to do it. You know, recruiting for SUNY Buffalo, just different in the sense that our location and some of the majors that we offer, just very little different than SUNY Cortland. So had to make that switch and had to, had to lock in and get those kids. Of course, what was that feeling like for you stepping onto that football field for the first time as a head coach? It was like in the moment, you know, sometimes you just take a pause sometimes and you breathe and you just say, wow, like this is a great opportunity. We're here. But honestly, like when you're doing it, you're just constant, constant, constant. You know, sometimes I have to remind myself to take a step back and, and breathe and pinch myself and and look at where we came from, where we started in 2009, uh, coaching the wide receivers on a part time basis to, you know, 2022. Here we are, head football coach, you know, so those are kind of surreal moments, but it just reminds people that. If you get in a profession for the right reasons, um, you stay loyal to your craft, stay loyal to your kids, stay loyal to the coaches that you work with, um, good things can come your way. As a new football coach, 
what was that like of recruiting the kids, but also recruiting a coordinator and coaching staff around you? Yeah, that was that was huge. That was different. That was a lot different than anything I had to do as a as a defensive coordinator. So it was interesting, but I just trust I trust people that I've met over the years and people that I've seen from a distance do work at other places. So I'm really blessed to put together a great staff. And I know that this staff that we have in place is going to be the staff that brings Buff State back to the dominance that they once had here in the 90s. What does a typical game day look like for you as a head coach versus for your players? Oh, for me as a head coach, you know, let's say let's say if we've got a let's say if we've got an evening game, an evening game, you know, I get in here, I work out, then we'll get on the field, have a little throw around with the players, you know, just get them loose so they're just not staying in bed all day. Then we'll have a team meal about four hours before the game. So if the game's at seven, we'll have a team meal about three. Uh, while we're having a team meal, we'll have TV or something on, something to keep the guys more relaxed and things like that. If we have a recruiting event, then I have to entertain uh, parents and recruits for a little bit, talk to them for a little bit. Um, other coaches are tour them around and stuff, but I'll come in there and talk to them about the recruiting process and, and where we are in that process. And then after that, I just like to get on the football field. You know, the first group comes out about um, about an hour before game time. So I like to get on the field about 20, 30 minutes before the first group and just take it all in, gather my thoughts, and just think about how I'm going to manage the football game. What are some of the traditions that you've helped to implement as a head coach for Buffalo State? Uh, some of the traditions, like our, our Friday traditions, you know, when our – our players run the meetings and do a lot of speaking at those Friday traditions, at those Friday meetings on the road, uh, the way we travel, um, the way we do things in a hotel, just little things, you know, just the little things, the way we practice, you know, everybody gets excited for Wednesday practices because they know it's the most competitive practice with all the different competition periods. And we're going to be in full pads. Everybody looks forward to that. Everybody looks forward to the to things that go along those lines. Um, so as far as tradition goes, it's just everything little by little building it. But um, our players look forward to the meetings. They look forward to the team events. They look forward to the team bonding things and then how we structure things throughout the week as far as practice. Who are some of the teams in your conference that you compete against each week? Some of the teams in our conference, are, we we play in the Liberty League Conference. It's, it was rated last year, I think, as the fourth toughest conference in the whole country. D3.com rated us that way. So that, that just shows that we play some really good competition. Um, we've got Union College, RPI College, Hobart College, um, who am I missing? St. Lawrence, uh, University of Rochester, um, obviously us. And who are, I'm probably missing somebody else I can't think of right now, but really competitive league. Um, Ithaca College, excuse me. Last year, we put two teams in the, in the NCAA tournament between Ithaca and Union. So we know that we're playing some really good competition. So I know that when our program has success in our conference, we've arrived. You know, we're not just another program. We're one of the best in the country. What is that home game atmosphere like when teams like Ithaca comes to home versus going to away to like Utica? Well, we love love when teams come visit um Coyer Field. Um, it's great. It's a great atmosphere. The fans do are very supportive. Um, for our night games and homecoming games, we've gotten some really really nice crowds. Um, people showing a lot of support from the community and both the university. So really really excited about that. Love playing at home. Love the fact that we're you know we're building something special. And the people that come to the games and watch us consistently can see the growth and can see the direction that the program's headed in. And we're excited for next year to take take an even bigger step. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you've built as a head coach? Yeah, like when you when you get in and you're taking over a program, it is all about the culture. But the culture, you know, it's a fancy word for what are your kids, what are people, what are your kids doing on and off the football field? Right? That's the culture. And we want our kids to be blue collar hard work and be very disciplined and have the drive to want to succeed both in the classroom and on the football field. You know, the kids that the kids that are coming to our school now to be a part of our program, they're coming at a time where it's not, um, I describe it as it's not popular to come to Buff State right now. You know, Buff State hasn't had back to back to back winning seasons and things of that nature. The program is building. So these guys are like the foundation of what we're building. That's something special. So getting those right kids in, is just as important as getting as much talent in, right? Because the talent doesn't mean anything if the talent and the culture aren't married together. What does that recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes? And as a head coach, what do you look at in those prospective student athletes? Well, obviously talent, like, you know, your talent is very, very important, but we want to know like who you are as a person because your talent only, your talent only gets you but so far, you know, and we think about the kids that we have on our team and how these kids will, will merge in with those kids. Right? We won't bring somebody into our organization or to our locker room who we don't think would be a really good fit. 
So obviously we want to see talent, but then we want to hear like, what are your coaches in high school telling us, saying, telling us about you? What are other coaches you've played against saying about you? What are you doing when nobody's around? That's what we want to know, right? So those are all those kind of things that we look into when we're recruiting a potential student athlete. So yes, the talent is very, very important, but it can't just be the talent. We want good football players as well, but good people. What does that official visit look like at Buffalo State when those prospective student athletes come on campus? Yeah, when you come on official visit, it's going to be very informative. You're going to get a chance to meet players, coaches, um, faculty. Um, you're going to get tours of the building. You're going to get informed. You're going to get – like the goal is when you leave on a visit, you know everything there is to know about our school academically, socially, athletically, and financially. So when you walk out of that door, everything's answered for you. You know, we want things to be as informative as possible. But like I tell people all the time, we don't – we're not trying to sell anything. We're just presenting information. So when people come, we are exactly who we are. Our players are very heavily involved with the recruiting process because I want those guys to meet guys who they can potentially share a locker room with. So I think that's very, very important. So during that whole process, when you leave here, that you know that everything there is to know about us from what we're doing schematically, offense, defense, to if we have your major, how much school is going to cost, all of that stuff. We bang all of that stuff out on that visit. As a head coach, what is it like getting to see those freshmen put on that Buffalo State uniform for the first time? Oh, man, it's surreal. Like, you know, when you watch kids that you recruited through the process and then you watch them come here and, like, they're here now. Like, it's not a recruiting process no more. They're family now. So watching them develop, just like anything else, like when you watch family or you do something like your family gets together once a year and you notice your little nephew or, or something like that or a little cousin, you saw him one year, the next year you see him, oh, they're bigger, they're getting taller. Or they're doing things different. You're like, wow, they're watch, watching them grow up in front of your eyes. So when I watch a, a young man who, who we went through the recruiting process with, put on that uniform for the first time, it's like, oh, man, you're a Bengal. Really excited to have you here. Now let's work to develop you so we can achieve all those things that we talked about achieving. What is it like getting to see those freshmen achieve those high moments, like those career moments in their career? Oh, it's special. It's special. But like, you know, like I tell those guys all the time, your freshman year is important because we got to make sure we get off to a great start, both football wise, but most importantly, academically. Right. Because the best version of football player yourself, you're not going to be that at 18, 19. Right. We got to get you to 2021. 20, so that's why the classroom was so important. So getting those guys to that. But when you see like when you see freshmen grow up or you see it come to them. Right. Because when they get first get here, everything is going so fast. But then when you see it slow down and they have that moment. And that's the football player that you recruited. That's a special moment. As a head coach, what is it like seeing their seniors put on that uniform for the last time and then put on their first professional uniform? Yeah, the 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 seniors are always tough, man. Senior day, I always joke around. They always get my eyeballs to sweat on senior day, you know, because it's um it's tough to play four years of college football. You play four years of college football, you are part of a very elite fraternity, right? Four years of college football. A lot of people come to play college football, don't make it four years. Even at the higher levels, guys move on to the NFL draft sometimes after their junior year. So to play four years of college football is something special. So when they've made it through all the trials and tribulations, I have the utmost respect for those young men. So it's it's tough to see them go, especially when they're really cornerstones in our locker room and, and great leaders for our program. But it's great to know that the next chapter of their life is, is starting. And right, you as a head coach or you as a coach in general, you aided and helped them with that process to make it to the next chapter. Like what the goal is, is, like I tell people all the time, it's not a, it's not a four year thing. It's a 40 year thing, right? When you decide to come to Buff State, you decide to come play for our coaching staff. Our relationship with you goes on long past just your four years of playing college football. What is it like getting to see your players go on into the NFL or XFL or even the CFL? Yeah, everybody's got a, everybody's got a goal to want to play professional football. It's really, really hard to do. Um, but guys can have the opportunities. I tell people all the time, it doesn't matter where you go. It's about what you do when you get there. So we're fortunate to have some young men who are getting some looks from some professional teams at some different levels. So that's pretty good to see because it, you know, it brings more awareness to our program. But it just reminds kids like you work hard, you do what you need to do. Good things will come. But we've got a lot of guys going professional and a lot of things that are not just playing professional football. And that's the goal, right? The goal was to use football as a tool to get you to that next chapter in life. Some people is going to be professional football. Some people, we want them to be professional teachers, doctors, lawyers, um, police officers, uh, law enforcement, you know, things like that. All of the, all in that nature ties in together of being a professional. So it's our job to kind of teach them lessons that when they leave here, they can take with them to that next chapter in their life. 
as a football coach, what is it like getting to see those players go on and going into the, the profession of coaching college football? Oh, man, I tell them all the time. It's hard. I tell them all the time. So it's great whenever you have a former player of yours who gets into coaching and you see them having success in coaching. I always root for them no matter where they're at. Um, even if they're in the same conference and they play against us, I root for them every single game, but the game when they play against us, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's always, it's always great to see guys pick up on the profession, pay it forward, pay it back and, and kind of take that path. But I remind them it's, it's very, very hard. And I tell people, you got to make sure you're in it for the right reasons. What are some of your future plans for Buffalo state moving forward? I want us to be the best team in the Eastern region. You know, that's, that's what the goal is. You know, when I decided to come here, I thought this school had a lot of great things in place. Um, I knew we had to build and we are building, but I, I see a lot of potential in this place, you know, so our focus right now, we're going into our third season, but our second year together as a, as a full program going into our third season. And I'm excited to see our guys get stronger, um, do better in the classroom and continue to, to get more confidence in the things that we're doing and we're building, right? Trust in the process and taking it to the next step. What advice would you give those incoming freshmen entering their first year of college football? Get locked into your academics, get locked into your playbook, get locked into the weight room. Um, I know college comes with a lot of a lot of fun social things that can be distractions. Just stay focused and good things will come. Don't let the outside noise bother you. Stay locked in, stay committed. It's a grind in college. Don't get me wrong. It is a grind, but it, the reward or the satisfaction after you've accomplished it is 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 priceless. What advice would you give those players looking to play professionally, whether it's in the NFL, CFL, or even teams leagues like the XFL? Go to go somewhere, go to a school that wants you, and when you get there, do the best that you can. It doesn't matter where you go; it's all about what you do when you get there. What advice would you give those players looking to get into coaching after their playing career? If you're looking to get into coaching, um, don't do it for the money. There's not a lot of money involved. Do it because you want to be a part of young men's lives. Do it because you, you love the sport. Do it because you want to help a program. You do it for all the right reasons, building relationships, and um, good things will come. If you get into it and all you're thinking about is the money and you're thinking about this and that and that, you're not going to be very successful at all. What advice would you have those future head coaches out there looking to build their own program and build their own legacy? Um, it's very challenging depending on where you're starting, but it's also very rewarding and it's a lot of fun. You know, it's great as a coach when you've worked for other different coaches that you can take a little piece by hair from all those different coaches and mold something and that becomes yourself. So it's really exciting when you when you can do that because you've been fortunate to work for some different people. So you learn some things. But it's very, very hard. It's very challenging. But anything in this world worth anything is always going to be very hard and challenging. That's what makes it special. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Buffalo State football program app? Oh, Buffalo State. We're all over Instagram. We're on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, that's probably the only social media I use. But um, that's where we are on social media. Our, our Twitter is pretty good and our, and our Instagram page is pretty good. Check us out. Thank you again, Coach Lazarus Morgan, for your interview, and best luck in your future as the head coach at Buffalo State. Well, thank you for ha having me today, Brandon. It was a pleasure. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Lazarus Morgan, for your interview, and best luck in your future. Go Bengals. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, Share and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.